Right, this is 8.4, laws of logarithms. <coughs> if you guys remember the uh, exponent laws, which are down here, uh, any, any power with the same base, when you're multiplying the powers, you can add the exponents. When you're dividing the powers, you can subtract the exponents. And when you have a power raised to another exponent, you multiply those exponents, okay? So this is a review from, uh, I guess, the end of grade 10 and, and a lot of 11. Uh, we're gonna take these rules and now apply them to logarithms, because as you know, logarithm is the inverse function of an exponent uh, or an exponential function. So these rules actually can be used with logarithms as well. And what we find is they're actually very useful to us when we're trying to solve equations uh, with unknowns and logarithms, okay? So if you found that these kind of exponent laws are relatively easy, which they are, right? We're just dealing with simple addition and subtraction and multiplication. It's just recognizing when to use them. Uh, you're gonna find this lesson also quite easy, okay? So that's a good thing. So our goal is to recognize the connection between the laws of exponents and the laws of logarithms and use the laws of logarithm to simplify expressions. So since the logarithm, logarithm function with the base A is the inverse of the exponential function with base A, it makes sense that each exponent law should have a corresponding logarithmic law. You've seen that the exponential property A to the exponent of zero is equal to one, has the corresponding logarithmic property log base A one equals zero. And that's why, the reason why is because we have to remember what is a logarithm? This is what a, this is the exponent that a needs to be raised to to give you one. That exponent is of course zero. Okay, that's how logarithms work. All right, so here's our exponent laws that we just talked about. So the question is, what are the corresponding laws of logarithms for each exponent law? So it says determine an equivalent expression <coughs> for log base a in brackets m times n, where a, m, and n are positive numbers and a is not equal to one. So that's important, right? This law here that we're gonna use doesn't work for all values of m and n and a. They have to be specific. a, m, and n, they all need to be positive and a cannot be one, okay? So that's important. So if you go to use these laws, you have to make sure you're not doing it with negative numbers in brackets here. And if a is not one, you won't ever, I don't think you'll ever see a logarithm with base one, okay? Because none of these laws will apply. <coughs> so this is the proof. This is how we find the log logarithms out. So just pay attention here closely. So any positive number here, m, we can express with any base as long as we change that exponent accordingly. Okay, does that make sense? So we're going to let m equal the base A with an unknown different exponent, okay? But it's important to recognize that we can do that. We can let M, so any number, be that same number with this base of A, but a varying exponent. So X obviously doesn't have to be a whole number, but it does have to be, uh, in this case, we're dealing with positive values of M, A is greater than one, or not equal to one, okay? So the same thing for N. So we've just redefined A and M to exponents with the base of A, or sorry, powers with the base of A. Any questions about this step here? Anybody not understand what's going on there? Okay. Okay, good. So the reason we do that is we want this base A because we're dealing with the logarithm with base A. Okay, so all of these operations and all of these um, laws are gonna deal with the same, log the same basis. It's the only way they work, okay? So if m is a to the exponent of x and n is a to the exponent of y, then it holds true that m n is then ax times ay. So by exponent law, a to the exponent of x plus y. Any questions till there? Okay. So now if we want to find the log of m n, it's the same thing as the log of a to the exponent of x plus y. Okay, because we've defined m n here as a to the exponent of xy. So that would hold true, okay? We're just substituting in for mn a x plus y. Any questions? All right, almost done. Here's where it might get a little confusing for some. 
I'm gonna put this on top so we can see that step. So <clears throat> if we have log base A MN is equal to log base A AX plus Y, this term here, remember, is the exponent that A needs to be raised to to get the value of A raised to X plus Y. So this equals X plus Y. Any questions there? Okay. Wait, how do you get it? Okay, because logarithms by definition, this whole term, now it is equal to the exponent that A needs to be raised to to get this term, A X plus Y. <coughs> so what does A have to be raised to to get A X plus Y? It has to be raised to X plus Y. Right? Got it? So that term is X plus Y. Any questions there? All right. So if that's x plus y, we can sub it in, and now we have this, log mn is equal to x plus y. Okay, we also know, way back at the beginning, that a m is ax, and n is ay. We define that, okay? If m is ax, a raised to the exponent of x, therefore, log base a m is equal to x. Any questions about this? Why is that the case? Okay, everyone understands that? That's by definition, right? A needs to be raised. This value is the exponent that A needs to be raised to to get M. So A needs to be raised to X to equal M. Okay? Same thing goes for our N value. It's equal to A to the exponent of Y, which we defined earlier. So therefore, this statement is true. Log base a n is equal to y. All right, so if that's the case, that's equal to x, that's equal to y, subbing these two in to our previous formula, we get log m n is equal to log a m plus log a n. We sub that in for x and that in for y. Okay, so here's our, our finished product. So that's, that's our law then. So if we're taking a logarithm of two numbers multiplied by each other, we can draw those two numbers out and take the log of both of those numbers separated by an addition. So inside the brackets, there's a multiplication. When you take those two values out, you separate them by addition, logging both the values. Okay? And you can check this on your calculator right now if you wanted to. You could just type in uh, log 8 and then try log 4 plus log 2 and see if you get the same answer.